What's up guys? I'm Trevor, this is Motion Auto TV, and behind me is my 2JZ GTE BVTI swapped uh, S550 Mustang, where we need a lot of, uh, we need a lot of work. So we're trying to take this thing across the country in about two weeks, so we gotta get to work. We make the strings. We are back at the shop and working on the 2Js. So last night I came here and swapped the oil pan on here. I uh, went ahead and put a little, little uh, basically just had to clean the crap out of it again and uh, throw a little bead of, of RTV on it. Got it all on, got it all torqued down. And so right now I'm messing with some more stuff. So as you can see, this is the engine mount plate that, uh, that I made. And uh, looking at it now, it kind of wiggles a little bit. So I, uh, I definitely need to reinforce it. I initially thought it was going to be stronger than that. But... Uh, gonna do some sort of a uh, little maybe just one right next to it right here but the other thing I have to consider is this whole uh, this is a oil cooler adapter with a thermostat in it so there's an in and an out and then I have an oil pressure sender right here that goes like an autometer gauge so this was over here so I just cleaned up all this stuff kind of put a new filter on it and got it kind of clocked over in this way it's still loose for now but uh, that gives me you know at least another point of reference on when I actually build this other mount. What to do is remove this power steering pump and this AC line, or this AC kind of idler pulley right here. So a lot of people, when uh, when they do swaps in 240s, is they actually get like a, uh, they delete this whole thing and, and they make this belt adapter thing that just kind of goes right here and it, it supports the, the power steering pump. But uh, I don't recommend that at all. I recommend actually just leaving the factory size belt on it and gutting the AC compressor. So it's just an aluminum bracket. It doesn't weigh much, but it actually supports the power steering a lot. And it keeps this belt from jumping off. So when I first initially got the 2JZ in the car, I went to Vegas, or in the S14, went to Vegas and ended up putting it on the wall because I clutch kicked. And I had one of those adapter bracket or those brackets on here that delete the, the AC and uh, kept just shooting belts off of it, thought I had it fixed. Went out to Vegas, shot it in the wall, and uh, anyhow, put this on here and literally have not had any issues since then. Uh, anybody who ever does a swap in a 240 or drift car, I always recommend doing this. This is pretty much the best way to go. And you basically just leave this front thing on as like an idler. So no issues with that. But now that the Mustang has electronic power steering, right there, we don't have any hydraulic lines or anything like that. So I ordered a, uh, a basically a ribbed pulley that goes right here and we'll just turn this into basically kind of a square looking belt. So uh, this will be an idler tensioner. It'll go to the alternator and then just run the water pump and delete all this stuff over here and I'll have more room on the side of the engine. Oh, and uh, one quick update too. I know a lot of you guys are wondering if you won the WRX. Uh, we sent off our entries over to our sweepstake, it's sweepstakes administrator, and uh, we were basically just waiting for them to get uh, get back to us with the with the names and then clear the people. So, uh, yeah, uh, update will be uh, will be following soon on the winner of the giveaway. But uh, I just figured I'd throw that in there real quick. All right, guys. So we are figuring out some solutions to my whole uh, engine mount wobbling issue. So. Uh, right now, I've got this custom little thing I've been working on. So this is a piece of angle iron and kind of cut the ends and everything to kind of match that face right there. And I should be able to just basically weld it right here, weld it right there, weld it across the top, right here on the bottom. And since it has this plane and that plane, it should give us tons and tons of, uh, of strength without having to add a ton of additional weight. And uh, I think it's gonna give me a little bit more clearance. I wish I would have moved this engine mount over to be able to put this on the back side of this because I will have to trim this a little bit to get my wastegate to fit uh, on the on the passenger side. But uh, overall, I think that's gonna look pretty cool. It's gonna look better than just a random plate on there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna fully, fully weld it. I'll probably just do some little, uh, little stitches kind of across the top. And then I might box in the bottom, maybe just put like a little square up in there and, uh, and get that welded. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, kind of the purpose of these engine mounts is not to be the, 
the biggest, baddest baller on YouTube making the coolest engine mounts. Uh, the purpose of these engine mounts is to get them in there so that I could move on with the rest of the project. So that's, uh, that's kind of the thing. I'm stressing out about this thing. I feel like we have like less than two weeks. I wanna be testing this thing on the track in less than two weeks uh, because we leave in 21 days. Less than, no. Ooh. Uh, we leave in about 18 days. So tons of parts are coming. Uh, I still need to order a bunch of parts. Uh, Dave came by earlier and grabbed the drive shaft. He's gonna take that to his house and uh, kind of figure out a little drive shaft adapter so we could use a normal style U-joint for the back. But I'll show that a little, a little bit later. Uh, I wanna get these things tacked up, set them in the car, make sure everything's uh, lining up with them good, and then do a full weld on them. And then we're gonna throw this back in the car tonight and start figuring out other things. Got these all welded up. You can see I just did like a little, some little stitches across the top. Welded it fully around here. Cleaned up all that stuff. I fully welded the back sides of these guys. And then I added a little plate on the bottom of each of them. So, uh, so yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. Just uh, these guys need a coat of paint. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with how they turned out. So I need to put this one on this side right here and actually go ahead and do a mock-up with the exhaust manifold. I have to clear some stuff to get the wastegate to fit. Here's the completed engine mount. Got the tile wastegate on there. You can see, I have to make a couple uh, modifications. But she fits now, and uh, and she's still still nice and strong. So uh, this other wastegate I had on here, this it was a JGS, which is a... Uh, JGY is, is what it was, but it's technically like a 50 mil? No, it's not a 50. It's like a 40 millimeter wastegate. And it's two bolt flange, but I think, I don't know, something happened with it, but it's like warped. Pretty so sure they see. stopped making those in 2008, so. They made them. Old. They made them a long time ago. So if you guys remember my, uh, my Datsun 510, I bought a like log manifold KA24DE turbo kit a long time ago that was used. And it was old then. And that was when I was in high school. That was like 2000 and eight or 10 when I did that. And that was already old then. So it's been a super solid wastegate and it's it's always worked great for me. But I think we uh, we got to throw the tile on it. I was actually gonna put this on the sleeper Civic. Um, so I actually ordered it and never used it. So it is brand new, um, but yeah, it's not warped. So uh, so we should be good with that. So I just need to throw a spring in here, throw some paint on these uh, these brackets, and then we're gonna throw it, uh, throw it in. But so my whole drive shaft dilemma, Dave, do you got any, you got an update on the drive shaft dilemma? I mean, we just need to put the tranny and everything in and then measure how long it needs to be. There's so uh, they basically make an adapter plate on the internet, but I've tried, I, I called like three different places today to try to figure it out, talk to drive shaft shop, try to like, in, like they're like four or five weeks out. Um, so anyhow, Dave threw it into uh, to SolidWorks and basically is making a six bolt adapter to a bolt this 240, this is a 240SX 
to a CD09 transmission uh, drive shaft and I stuck it in there and it was about two inches too short. So basically adding this spacer adapter in there, now I don't have to buy a drive shaft, we'll just use that spacer adapter if we could get it cut locally and then just bolt that drive shaft in there and I don't have to worry about a drive shaft because that was kind of one thing that was stressing me out. So uh, now that we have this engine mount, got to paint that, throw the tranny on it, stick it back in the car and then measure that so that he could finalize it and we're going to send the CAD file off tomorrow to see uh, if somebody local could actually kind of cut that thing out. So. So we have the engine bolted in the, in the thing. You see, they're not, I'm painting the brackets nice and black. We get that fresh oil pan on there. Nice RTV, it's not leaking yet because there's no oil in it, so that's pretty good. Um, if you come back here, we have the drive shaft out of the 240. Dave, you want to stick that up there? See what we're, what we're working with. So there's not as much space as we thought there was going to be. I mean, I, I guess as much as Dave thought. I thought as, we had like two inches. Maybe as as much as I explained. You ready? Is that like you ready for this? Half Dave? an inch. <laughs> no, it's it's at least an inch. Okay. So how much is that? That's that's about an inch and a half. Is what that is. You wish. So we basically need to make an adapter. See, but we could get a different flange yoke for this though. So. Basically what David did is earlier he uh, he went home and he put all this stuff into uh, into SolidWorks, yeah? Yep. And so I guess the bolt patterns overlapped with each other? Yeah, there's no way you can make them the same because they're really close. So it was too close for comfort for, because this is a 240SX diff flange. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a 240SX diff flange. Like this style right here is off of the 350Z, which is a lot bigger. Uh, so when I put the 350Z diff in my car, I actually had to drill new holes in the diff mounting flange. Whereas this thing, right now, it's just kind of small so it overlapped, but we could technically convert this, since this yoke just comes right off with those clips, in the little uh, little U-joint or whatever, or a universal joint. So we could actually make a thinner adapter plate to actually just go in there to where it bolts to here, and then this bolts directly to that. and on the Ford drive shaft it has this little slip yoke it's kind of like a kind of like a little cv shaft right there it basically is a cv shaft and the reason it does that is because it bolts directly to the transmission right here with one of those uh guidibos guibos something like that those little rubber things little rubber insulator or whatever that bolts to the tranny and uh, so it bolts to that so in order to compensate for like the drive line you know, moving forward and backward because these bushings back here are like super flexy. It uh, it gives it that. So I don't know. You got some ideas, Dave? I mean, I think we we should just convert it to that flange right there. Just get a different one. I could go to the drive shaft shop tomorrow and say, hey, what yoke fits this? That's in stock. It's smaller, but you could also just go to the drive shaft place and have them. Well, this back section onto this drive shaft. I'll just cut that and stick it on there. I mean, yeah, but then we have two, and I don't know how much power those like, and I don't know if they like clutch these, kicks. These, these joints are a lot stronger. With Jay-Z's. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't like clutch kicks with Jay-Z's. So the other option I thought about was basically, I explained it earlier, was cutting off that drive shaft, cutting off the tip of this drive shaft, and keeping it a two-piece drive shaft basically just with the, the 350z thing in the front welded and then i could send it to the drive shaft shop have them kind of double check it or maybe even just kind of mock it up and say hey i need it like this make it work and have them actually weld it together and balance it and do all that type of stuff so those those are kind of the options i would rather have a one-piece drive shaft but you know i could get this made for now just so we could go do some testing with the car and then still continue to work on a drive shaft 
you know. Ever wondered what's inside a carbon fiber drive shaft? Nothing. They're hollow. Carbon fiber. Well, it has this. That's a. It's a poster. I guess this poster you put on your wall. Shaft for vibration. You think? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so right here, this is uh, kind of the 370Z flange. You can see it's got all them ribs right there, and then it's got these the carbon fiber, and it's basically just kind of like. Rip for her pleasure. Yeah, it's like glued or just formed around that. So I thought that was really interesting. You can see there's some strands of it. And I think I cut it off at like the perfect edge right there. Give me a bunch of uh, stuff. Are you trying to make it in there? I got one. I was trying to get another one. Jeez. It's not as easy as it looks. Just be that one. The trick guy. You keep you keep peeking the audio on the camera every time you do that. Yeah, check this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, off. Glued or formed. Here is the other option for what I was thinking, and uh, and that is basically using the factory drive shaft, cutting it, sticking it like that, and just giving her the old weld. So probably not me weld it. But just looking at, at that, and then so there is a little bit of an angle going right here. But I mean, obviously, U joints they're they're meant to take uh, take take some of that away. And I might be able to. Well, I don't know. I was gonna so say I might I might be able to put so that not, like. It's not meant to. It's not meant for all the angles. It's not meant for any angles. But um, so I lowered it down a little bit because it was a little bit worse when I had the tranny up a little bit taller. But uh, yeah, so I think that's. Uh, that's kind of all there's going to be for the drive shaft for tonight. Uh, kind of the other, the other thing that, that would probably make the most sense is to actually go to the drive shaft shop, uh, my local drive shaft shop tomorrow, basically have them take the yoke off of this right here, get a new one of these, and then just bring them this drive shaft right here and say, hey, cut this off and weld it onto that. So basically get a whole new tube and that so that way I'm not destroying this 240 drive shaft because that was like 500 bucks for like the swap drive shaft. So that, that's, that was the reason why I wanted David to make that adapter plate. So I think either way, if we do the adapter plate, it's gonna have to go to a bigger flange. And um, yeah, so I think that's, that's probably about it. David actually made a video of uh, doing the little SolidWorks thing on his computer at home, yeah? Yeah. So he, he made a little video kind of designing that. I told him, I want him to teach me how to do some of that stuff. So Jamie has an iPad and uh, there's this program for iPads where you can kind of do stuff. And one of the things that I, I've, I, I feel like I've, I haven't really advanced my, like my knowledge in the past couple of years. I've just been like painting cars and like doing Jay-Z swaps and stuff like that. But I've always wanted to like learn how to do like some CAD stuff and then actually get like a 3D printer and be able to make stuff and like test it out and then actually have stuff like cut on like a, you know, an actual CNC makes some really cool parts. So, uh, eventually that's something I'd like to do, but, uh, I think for funnies, I could probably like weld this together and go do a burnout, but I don't think realistically that's the best option. I think best option is that, or actually ordering a drive shaft yoke from those other people tomorrow or their adapter. If we can't get this one made locally and do that. So, uh, other than that, we'll, we'll continue tomorrow. All right, guys, so the engine is uh, is officially back in here. I just set the turbo over there so it doesn't look so lame. Um, kind of figuring out some wiring stuff right now. And uh, I'll take you guys over to the engine. So I was actually thinking that this whole harness, so basically what I need to do is I need to get a, uh, a power and ground and all that stuff from the fact the chassis to the actual engine. So uh, you can see right here, this is the power wire, comes over here, goes to the starter right there, which that's all pretty much in the same location as the, as the 2J. So the starter stuff, all this wire should just go straight over there and I should be able to bolt that on, as well as the starter signal right there. So I should be able to, to get away with that to hopefully get like the push button start to work. Uh, you can see it also connects here to the alternator and then uh, to the AC stuff. So all these AC, lines uh, those connect to it as well uh, which we're not obviously hooking up AC but I think it would be kind of cool to actually hook up AC on this thing uh, eventually but not right now we don't we don't need it yet um, so yeah 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this harness right here and uh, stick it in the car. And I really wanna just turn the key for the, on the Mustang, you know, hook up the battery, turn the key and see if I could get this thing to crank over with this harness just down here on the bottom. And then I wanna try and get the, some of the sensors and stuff to work. And I think to do that, I'm probably gonna have to end up hooking up some of these wires because this goes to the factory ECU, but it runs a ton of stuff on here. So this one has like a boost controller right here. It has dual, uh, dual valve, valve timing. Um, it has direct fuel injection. So it has like a high pressure fuel pump right here. Uh, fuel pressure sensor, you know, map sensor, all that type of stuff kind of built in on this engine, uh, coils and stuff. I'm not sure where the crank pickup is uh, for like a cam signal. That'll probably actually look right there. So this is probably for the cam signal for the RPM or the timing of it. So there's actually that gear right there that goes on the back and goes out there. So I might be able to uh, maybe either kind of splice into my wire and see if we could figure something out like that. Um, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of random things that I just don't know until we actually get the harness in the car, get some power going to it, and then we actually try to hook it up. So the other thing is, is this harness right here, it actually connects to the electric power steering rack. So I need to make sure that when we push the button that the actual electric power steering works and that, uh, you know, we have power steering. All right guys, so a little update. I got the starter, the power wire going to the starter. The power wire is hooked up to the electric power steering rack. The starter signal wire that comes out of this harness right here, I have it plugged into this, uh, this body harness right here. So we'll see what that does. Um, you can see the factory ECU is not plugged in. None of that stuff is hooked up. Um, what else do we got? So I hooked up the grounds right here, power wires into there power wires into here. So this one probably goes to the battery, this one goes to the starter, and then one of these goes to the alternator, vice versa. So uh, I don't have the alternator hooked up right now, but it's just kind of chilling over here, not touching anything. Um, so basically right now, I'm just really, really curious what happens when you touch the key. Like when you turn the key with this basic stuff turned on, without the factory ECU tied into anything over here, telling it's running or doing whatever, what works, because we don't know. The door chime doesn't work. We don't. We got no door chime. I think the transponder for the key thing is actually right here. The radio works. And the windows work. Well, that's good. Because we need all that stuff to work. So what else? We need it to start. Is what we, so it's not, it's not giving it fuel and it's not starting it. Run power active, press brake to start. So I have the brake pressed. Guess we gotta plug in more stuff. All right, so the next course of action is I'm gonna come over here to the engine and I'm gonna pull off everything. 
pull up everything off of, uh, of this thing and basically just lay the harness in the engine bay next to the other thing and we'll see what happens. We have the, the harness off of the EcoBoost. So we got the plug that goes into the ECU. This is the one that kind of goes to the body control stuff. Uh, there's a couple little sensors like right here. I think this goes to like some IAT stuff or some stuff right out of the turbo. Uh, boost controller. This is a crank position sensor. Uh, and this actually reads just right off the front of the engine. So this is a three wire sensor and the ones on the JZs, let's see before I say something, two wire sensor for the crank position sensor. So who knows if that's going to work or not. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll have to weld some tabs on something or maybe we'll have to like steal like that little sensor of it and weld it on here to get our tack to work. I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see. So, uh, we got the, obviously the, the coil packs, not going to hook any of that stuff up. We have these cam sensors, cam position sensors in the back. Uh, one of the one things that I probably will hook up is there's like a coolant temp sensor. So there's a coolant temp sensor on the back of the head. Um, other than that, coolant temp, RPM, oil pressure and oil temperature, I believe is, uh, is on here. So, I'm basically, for now, I'm just gonna grab this harness. This is, this is, a, twin, this is a GTE Auto, I think. Really? So I'm just gonna grab this guy, just stick it right here, just like so. Plug in the factory ECU, just like that. Plug this guy, guy in. And then there is, there's a ground somewhere. See what happens. So I'm curious if we get fuel now, because we didn't have fuel before. All right, so that did not work. Uh, nothing else changed. Didn't add anything. Didn't tell me anything different. So I'm thinking now, kind of, I don't know. I, I just don't know what the factory ECU wants to see before it can start. Like obviously like, you know, it's gotta be in neutral. Uh, or park to be able to start. Maybe it's just something as simple as that, but it's not telling me to move it to park. It's basically saying, saying to, to press the brake to start. And the, the brake pedal has been pushed down, uh, that type of stuff. Um, all the sensors and stuff are hooked up to the brake, brake pedal or whatever. Um, so the only thing I could think is maybe it has to do with the, with the transmission. There is a big wire and a little bundle of wires that plug in the back of the transmission right here. So it could be something to do with that. Uh, so I think maybe what I'm going to go ahead and do, since I have this thing on some little rolly carts, what I'm going to do is actually just roll it up underneath the car and then set the car as close down to it as I possibly can. And since the harness is just kind of hanging right here, I'm going to plug in the, uh, plug in basically as many sensors as I, as I can, or kind of the minimum amount of sensors that I need to, to see if if it needs a sensor signal or if it needs like a cam position sensor to know that it's okay and like it's in sync or something. But you think it would do that after it actually starts. Maybe it's just something as simple as the as it needs to physically know that the transmission is in park and maybe I could just jump some wires like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that over here and start playing with a couple of those things. So it actually cranks now. Uh, the only way we could get it to crank is by having this plugged into the transmission in actually shifting it into park right there manually. We were trying it before with it plugged in, but I had the gear shift all the other way and it actually wasn't showing up on the dash. So right now, if we go in here, you can see it actually shows that it's in park. What's it doing? I guess, I guess it doesn't want to start anymore. So I guess after this is done writing, we'll see if it'll if it'll start again. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. I thought we were just gonna be able to tell it that it's a manual and then it was gonna be okay. Okay. All right, so it cranks now, which it thinks it's in park. So what I was trying to do right here was with the trans. So right there, right there, I was basically 
It says automatic enabled. If you go down to the bottom, it says defines if automatic transmission is fitted. So I just hit disabled. And that was it. It was the only thing I did, and then now and then it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't start. We were basically trying to get it to start without having the transmission sensors plugged in. Uh, but I think for now, what we're going to have to do in order to get this whole key to work, uh, like this push button start with the JZ, is going to be actually have to jump those wires, basically tell it that it's in park all the time. And then from there, or park or neutral, and... Um, I guess from there that's it so the other thing is is the only way that the, the fuel pump doesn't stay on it only primes for a couple seconds when you first initially push the key but so we're gonna have to figure out how to get a uh, an rpm signal into the ecu so that it thinks that it's running so it'll continue giving the fuel pump power so that's another thing um i guess we're gonna have to figure out but um at least we got this kind of figured out we just need to figure out what wires to jump to tell it that it's in park All right, so I'm a little bit more confused now. So David was jumping around a couple little things and I think he might've shorted something, um, just kind of testing the, the little things over there or basically now it's not uh, saying that it's in park anymore even though everything's plugged in, just how it was. Uh, one of the little 30 amp fuses was blown over there and uh, I, re I tried replacing it. It's one of these little bitty guys, like right there. So I went ahead and swapped it with a different one and, uh, and didn't have any luck. I also checked the fuses under the dash, like on the, the passenger side kick panel and uh, basically just not working. So worst case scenario, basically I hop in the car, I hit the little, uh, little auxiliary power button or whatever, and then hook up my own uh, starter switch, basically just like a little push button or something. Um, and then after that, I think, pretty much that's it i mean i basically hit the accessory button tell it that and then i might have to wire in like a relay or something for uh for the fuel pump and just run the fuel pump off of a relay and then have kind of these wires out here giving um, some of the engine bay fuse box stuff power or i could just kind of make my own fuse box again like i had previously so this uh this engine harness right here is going to be super simple to wire it up Pretty much these red ones need power. This black one needs ground. Uh, this is the signal to the starter. This is an extra wire. And then this is for the tack. Other than that, it's it's pretty much a standalone harness with, you know, basically just give it some some power and some ground and a starter switch and it's gonna freaking run. And um, and then hook up, up, up a throttle cable and some fuel and we're, we're freaking sending on, uh, on that thing. So mostly the reason why I was trying to do all this stuff was um uh, this thing has like remote start which is pretty cool and uh you know having all those functions and everything work with that because if i could just hop in the car and just push a button and it just dun, 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 fires up everything works how sick would that be or it'd just be funny like a 2j swapped like newer mustang with like remote start so um the other thing that would be really that i would like to do is hook up the backup camera uh, figure out how to wire it all and basically tell it that it's in reverse so i don't know if i actually just need to get like a manual transmission uh engine harness and ecu which would suck i think that would i mean that kind of defeats the whole purpose of, of trying to do all this uh but if there is a way to do it on hp tuners and you guys know just let me know or if you guys have a way to get like a factory service manual dave said he looked around real quick and was not able to find one uh, i haven't looked personally uh, but that's probably what i'm going to do after i get done editing this video but uh, if you guys have any suggestions on other things on on ways that we could actually make this work um basically i'm going to go ahead and butcher that engine harness and uh, and hook up some like the coolant temp gauge and stuff like that and then the the sensor it's a three wire pickup for the crank position sensor down there on the block um and that actually just goes off of this little wheel right here so you can see that that's the like the crank position uh, so I'm assuming that's where it'll kind of get RPM or maybe it gets it off the, the number one ignition wire, something like that. Um, but yeah, and I guess the speed is not on the differential. I was looking at some of the parameters in HP tuners and it actually showed it on the inside of the transmission. So uh, I thought we, we lucked out and we were gonna have like the speed sensor coming off of the diff. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. I was just reading some, some stuff in there. But uh, overall, I think, uh, oh, and when David was messing with one of those wires, the speedo went up a little bit. Uh, so 
Overall, I think this thing is going to work. I did order the stuff for the drive shaft to basically make the custom drive shaft on probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I ordered a shifter relocation, ordered a bunch of things today. Uh, basically just kind of, I said, you know, there's a couple kind of things I was trying to do in the background, trying to get like sponsor deals. But like when I'm trying to rush a project like this and talking to companies that I've never worked with before, it's just kind of a pain. And, uh, you know, you got to talk to this guy and then everybody's out for Christmas and then it's New Year and then you get back to him and then they're overloaded because of, you know, they're gone for two weeks. So it was just a mess. So I basically said screw it today and just ordered most of the stuff that I needed. Uh, that being said, if you are a company or if you know of any companies that, uh, that would like to have parts on here or you think would be cool, um, you know, maybe send them my video and say, hey, you know, something like that. But uh, I think that is going to be it for this video. Uh, sorry, I didn't get more, but it does crank over now. And uh, the engine is in there with the turbo. So it looks kind of cool. Uh, I got the wastegate to fit. Get the mounts in. I'm rambling. Appreciate you guys watching. See you guys later.